series and parallel circuits. Ready, Connor? Good, shut up. Here we go. Wow, that's on the internet too. I said it as a joke, internet. Any part of a circuit can be described as a series or a parallel section. Uh, a series circuit is one where resistors are all connected in a row. Which of these two shows a circuit in simple series? This one, because the same skiers, the same current go through that resistor, that resistor, that resistor. Really, if it's a series section, there's no junctions. So this one, yes, no. Sometimes you're going to find that they haven't give you, given you enough information to ski your way through solving the circuit. And the only option that you have is to rewrite the circuit as its mathematical simplest equivalent. One resistor, one battery, typically what we'll go for. So there are ways to combine resistors. The first way is if they're in series. It says, find an expression for the total resistance of a series circuit. I'm going to put numbers on here. Let's suppose that this was 5 ohms. Let's suppose that this was 8 ohms. And let's suppose that this was 10 ohms. There is a lovely proof, but I'm cutting corners here, Robbie, to get to the punchline. So there is a lovely proof. I'm just going to tell you the total resistance is 5 plus 8 plus 10. If resistors are in series, you add them up. Uh, in your head, please. In other words, the mathematical equivalent. 23, in my head, please. Sorry, I did the 18 and forgot to go to the 5. The mathematical equivalent then, if I wanted to resketch this, now this one probably you'll be good enough that you don't need to redraw, but if I needed to redraw it as its simplest mathematical equivalent, there would be a battery and then there would be a 23 ohm resistor. Sometimes I write the actual number in there. Sometimes I'll do the fancy slanty zigzag lines for the resistor symbol. I don't care. This is a sketch. It's not the actual circuit. So I'm more interested in being clear than uh, matching or conforming to the particular pattern. So I think on the next page, if you have series resistances and you want to find the total resistance, you want to replace all the resistors in series with one single resistor, it's going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dot, dot, dot. So here is a great example. Example three says, select the best answer for the voltage drop across the 20 ohm resistor. 100 volts, less, more than 50 volts, less than 50 volts, and convince me. We're actually going to solve it. So the first thing we're going to do is show which way is downhill. Then the second thing I look for, and we'll detail this later, but the second thing I look for is, have they told me total current anywhere? No, but I look for that. The third thing I always check for is, is there any resistor where I know two things? Since if I know two things, I know four things, and I might be able to find a total current somewhere. Do I have two things? But this is going to be your mental checklist, OK? Did they tell me total current? No. Did they tell me two things anywhere? No. Then my strategy is going to be, I'm going to rewrite this as its mathematical equivalent. These two resistors are in series. I got a 5, I got a 20. If I replace that, James, with one single resistor, what would that be as the mathematical equivalent? So right now, sketch this. Do a little battery. Call that 100 volts. And James, you're telling me this is the same as a 25 ohm resistor. Now, in my sketch, which is not the actual circuit, but I can use it to figure out a lot about the actual circuit, Riley, in my sketch, how many volts do I gain from the battery? I've got it down to only one resistor now. How many volts must I lose going through that resistor if I'm able to get to the bottom? So now, in my sketch, I'll label that as 100 volts. I now know two things in my sketch. 
What's the current have to be? Oh, by the way, folks, at the top of the page somewhere, let's write down V equals I times R and power equals VI because we're going to be flogging these to death for the next few days. What must the current be there? What must the current be right there then? What must the current be right there then? Oh, what must the total current coming out of the battery be? Let's label that over here. So, 4 amps. And now I'm going to solve my actual circuit. James, how many amps right here? How many amps right here? Because there's no junctions. How many amps right here? 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 How many amps are going through this resistor then? Because there's no junction. Yes? Ding, 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 ding. I know two things. I know four things. How many volts do I lose going through this resistor? V equals what times what? V equals I times R. I know I, four. I know R, five. How many volts do I lose going through this resistor? 20, yes? Leaving how many? Okay, so I could go, I'm pretty sure this is 80 volts, or I could continue skiing. James, how many amps right here? How many amps right here? Because there's no junctions. How many amps right here? How many amps are going through this resistor as well? And so if I put the four amps, can you also see that if I had gone I times R, I also get the 80? So I've confirmed it independently two different ways. I confirmed it using Ohm's law, V equals I times R, and I could have figured it out if I was really clever just by skiing now. So what's the correct answer, A, B, or C? B, explain your answer. There. So look for total current first. Look for anywhere you know two things next. And if that doesn't work, re-sketch the circuit as its simplest form. And it's a sketch. You don't have to be, I'm not going to be fussy about getting all the symbols right. It's a sketch. In fact, sometimes I won't even re-sketch it in its simplest form. I'll do an intermediate sketch, and that's enough that I can see where I'm going and get the rest of the way because I'm lazy. Example four says find total current and resistance, and then find the current through and voltage drop across each resistor. Okay. Total current, did they tell me total current anywhere? No. Then next thing I look for is, is there anywhere I know two things? Do I know two things? No. Nope. Do I know two things? No. Nope. Do I know two things? No. Nope. These three resistors are in series. So what's the total resistance of this circuit? You could resketch this if you want, but I'm going to give you a new equation. V equals what times what? Get the I by itself, please. So all of you right now, write down I equals V over R, except, except here's a modified version of that. I total equals V total divided by R total. Total current equals total voltage divided by total resistance. Kayla, what was the total resistance? Okay. What's the total voltage? It's going to be the chairlift, the battery. Yep. In your head, Kayla, what's the total current? Four what units? Amps. Okay. Find total resistance. Done. Find total current. Done. Then it wants the current through and the voltage drop through each resistor. James, coming back to you. How many amps are leaving the battery? That's volts. How many amps are leaving the battery? Yes, let's label that right now. Four amps. Oh, and let's label downhill, downhill, downhill. That's which way we're going to ski. How many amps, James, right here? How about in this resistor? Because there's no junctions. How about in this resistor? Because there's no junctions. How about in this resistor? Because there's no junctions. Let's label all those. Drake V equals what times what? 
Hey, look, I, R. Uh, how many volts do we lose going through this resistor? Hello, how many volts do we lose going through this resistor? It must be 60 volts that we lose going through that resistor. How many volts do we lose going through this resistor? 20. Leaving how much? Double check. Do I get 20 if I use I times R? Or if I use Kirchhoff's voltage law, I get 20. That's my little built-in. Woohoo! I did this right. I found the current through and the voltage drop across each resistor. I have solved this circuit. For giggles, I could now ask you for the wattage. Ready? Before we turn the page, which is the brightest bulb? My mom says I'm not the brightest bulb. She means something different. Which is the brightest bulb here? Uh, power is what times what? 20 times 4, 240 watts. 4 times 20, 80 watts. Sorry, I said 20 times 4. 60 times 4. 60 times, I think I said 20 times 4. 60 times 4, 240 watts. I did the math right. 20 times 4, 80 watts. 20 times 4. Oh, these two bulbs are identical. They'd be the same brightness. So as an advanced question, I could give you this circuit and simply say, which bulbs are the same brightness? Prove it. Okay. Turn the page. It's going to get a little tougher. You're absolutely going to want your calculator out because I'm going to show you a button on your calculator that you may never have used before, but now you'll find out why it's there. A parallel circuit is where resistors start and end at the same height. You know what? A parallel circuit is where the skiers split up and then meet up. The resistors are connected at the top and at the bottom, but there's no other resistors in between. Which of these, folks, stay with me here. Which of these shows resistors in simple parallel? This one, not this one. In fact, these two here are in series with each other because all the same skiers go through those two. Okay? Can I have your focus here, folks? This is important. Thank you. Live with the distraction. But you'll notice here, right at this junction, we split up some skiers go this way, some skiers go that way, some skiers go that way, but they all meet up. That's a parallel circuit. Parallel circuits, a little tougher. Series circuits, if you want to find the total resistance, you add them up. It says, find an expression for the total resistance in a parallel circuit. I would normally walk through it with you, but I'm cutting corners. If you want to find the total resistance, you cannot. All you can find is one over the total resistance. So let's suppose that this right here is 5 ohms. Label it, please. Let's suppose that this right here is 10 ohms. Label it, please. And let's suppose that this right here is 20 ohms. Label it, please. If you want to replace that with one single solitary resistor, it's going to be 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. And that gives you 1 over the resistance. All of you right now, once you've written that down, every one of you, get your calculators out. Get your calculator out. Well, you're going to have to figure this out on your own. Okay? Mr. Duick, there's fractions. You got a good calculator. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to type 1 divided by 5. That's 1 over 5. Mine does a slash. Yours might do a divided by. That's fine. Plus 1 divided by 10. Plus 1 divided by 20. You're going to hit equals. This is not the answer. This is the reciprocal of the answer. However, all of you have a little x to the negative 1, or you have a 1 over x button. If you now hit that button for your answer, that'll give you the reciprocal and the equivalent resistance. Find it. And if you can't find it, now is your chance to raise your hand, and I'll show you where it is, because you all got one. And that's really one of the reasons you have that reciprocal button is for parallel, uh, parallel circuits and parallel resistors. Everybody find it? 
So this is one I made up. You're going to find for parallel resistors, often you'll get yucky totals because it's tough to make them work out evenly. I tried going with fives and tens, hoping it might work out evenly. Apparently not. This is the same. R total is the same as a 2.857. Ohm resistor. In other words, the mathematical equivalent here would be a battery and a 2.857 ohm resistor. I would carry extra sig figs because this is almost never my final answer, but I'm going to use this to find other stuff. So I would either try and use my answer button if I could, or at least carry like four or five sig figs if I could. That's it. That's the lesson. All we're going to do is apply this. So, oh, let's put it in a box. So for parallel, if you want to find R total, you cannot. All you can find is 1 over R total, and then take the reciprocal of that answer. Most common mistake, kids do all the 1 over plus 1 over plus 1 over plus 1 over, and they're so proud, and they get an answer, especially if it works out to a nice number, and they forget to take the reciprocal. It's 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus. You might notice that I have a fondness for built-in error checks. You want your built-in error check for any parallel resistor group? Nevada, in these three resistors, what was the smallest number? Loud and proud. The total will always be less than the smallest resistor. I knew it was going to be smaller than five. If not, you've messed up. You didn't hit a reciprocal. You did something wonky. You made a typo. Why? I'll let you think about it, but trust me, it will work. So you ready? Um, these are three resistors in parallel. I'm going to tell you right now, the total is going to be less than 10. It's going to be less than 10. It says find R total, I total, and then find V, I for all resistors. Okay. 1 over R total is going to be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20. What's the total equivalent resistance? Let's see. 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 15 plus 1 divided by 20. Hit equals, reciprocal button, and I get 4.61538. I'll go 4.6154. 4.6154. Ohms. What that means is that this is the mathematical equivalent of... 60 volts and a single 4.6154 ohm resistor. You can draw that or you can say I total equals voltage total over resistance total. Max, what's the total voltage in this circuit? Yep, it's going to be the battery, folks. Unless there's more than one battery, and we'll get there eventually, maybe. I might not get to multiple battery situations, but 60. And what was the total resistance, Max? So total current is going to be 60 divided by, I'm going to use my answer button absolutely, and I get 13 amps. So they wanted me to find total resistance, check. They wanted me to find total current, check. Now, James, we're coming back to you. How many amps are leaving this battery? Yep. Ooh, they split up. They split up. That's a problem. That's a pro I don't know how they split up. So I can label downhill, 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 downhill. 
I do know there's 13 amps leaving the battery. I just don't know how they split up. So step two, go skiing. Ready, Rebecca? We're gonna see together. How high is the chairlift? Whee! We went down this hill and we got to the bottom. How many volts did we lose in that 10 ohm resistor? And you know what? Since I lost 60 volts, I now know two things. I know three things. What must the current be in that little 10 ohm resistor? Six amps. Rebecca, that was so much fun. Would you come skiing with me again? So let's go skiing. Ski, ski, ski. How many? How high? You want to go down this hill? Okay. Whee! That was fun. How many volts did we lose going through this hill? Also 60 volts. Must have because that's a closed loop. Um, how many amps are there in that resistor? V over R. Yep. Now I have two options. How many amps right here? How many amps right here? I have 13 flowing in. Six went this way, six went this way. I'll bet you this is going to be three amps. And if you wrote that and quit, I'm good. But let's also prove it with the voltage rule. Let's go skiing again. Whee! How many volts in that resistor? Also 60. Now. Right now, this bugs some students because they're saying, Mr. Duick, isn't that 180 volts from a 60 volt battery? No, that's one 60 volt battery powering three separate 60 volt loops. That's the key. Uh, oh, 60 divided by 20, it is three amps. I know I'm right. And so I've got some nice error checks on my back work as well. I think I said this yesterday, last day, but I'll repeat myself. All I can do is add more junctions and add more forks, but it's gonna be the same stuff. Turn the page. This says, what can be said about the voltage drops across the resistors in the circuit below? Okay. This question is tough because they didn't tell me the chairlift. I don't know how high the mountain is. Okay. I do know total current. How many amps? But they split up here. They split up here. Well, you know what? These two resistors are identical. I guess I can say 2.5 amps and 2.5 amps. That was the only one that I told you was worth memorizing last day. You can do some stuff with clever ratios and things, Nevada, but it's redundant. Instead, here's what we're going to do. We're going to resketch this. We're going to replace that top resistor, those two right there that are in parallel, with one single resistor. So get your calculators out. This top resistor is 1 divided by 5 plus 1 divided by 10. No, it's not. Oh, sorry. 1 divided by 15. I thought you were saying the answer was 1 divided by 15. I can't even read, do it. It's, let's try that again, Connor. 1 divided by 10 plus 1 divided by 15. Thank you. And then reciprocal. That top resistor, that top resistor pair is the same as a single resistor. How big, Simone? So I'm just going to go like this. 6 ohms. This is my sketch. I don't care if it's not a fancy schmancy circuit diagram. Yump. I'm going to replace these two with a single resistor. It's going to be 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 5. Reciprocal. That's the same, Nick, as how big? And again, I don't want to do a fancy schmancy sketch. I just go like this, 4 ohms. Zoop, zoop. And I'll replace the bottom one. 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 12. I think this will be a 6 as well. Yeah? Now, this is not the real circuit, the original circuit. This is the mathematical equivalent. But you, do you notice these three resistors I deliberately made sure to write in series? So you ready? What's the total resistance? 16. 
Because in series, I can just add them up. 6 plus 4 plus 6. Yes? And then I total is going to be... Oh, wait, 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 wait. We know I total. What was the total current? Now what we can do is we can say V total equals I total R total. What was the total current? What was the total resistance, mathematical equivalent? What's the total voltage? Can we get an answer out loud, please? 80. 80. And where does that total voltage show up? Look, 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 look. That's the battery. Ah. Oh. So far, so good? We can do even more. Let's go back to our sketch, our mathematical equivalent. Put the 80 right there. James, how many amps are leaving this 80? Nope. How many amps are leaving this 80? Look at the original picture. Yeah. So how many amps right there? Now you ready, folks? Look, 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 look. How many amps are flowing through this mathematical equivalent? So this has to be 5 amps. How many volts must we lose going through this mathematical equivalent? So you ready? Here's what that means. Go back to the original. Each one of these must be a 30 volt high hill. Because if you can go that way or that way, but you have to lose 30 volts and there's only one hill either way, each one of them's got to be 30 volts. Do I know two things now in each of those? Then I know three things. I can tell you the current. I can tell you the current in here and I can tell you the current in here. Uh, the current here is V over R, three amps, yes? The current here is V over R, 2 amps. Actually, I also could have figured it out by saying if I got 5 amps coming in and the top one has 3 amps, the bottom one has to have 2 amps, but I also verified that using Ohm's law. James, how many amps right here? How many amps go through this series of resistors, this group of resistors here? So, if there's five amps going through my mathematical equivalent, how many volts must I lose in that little section right there? 20. Must lose 20 volts, which means each of these hills must be 20 volts and 20 volts. Otherwise, how the heck could I lose 20 volts going through those ways? Right? Again, Robbie, if I'm saying from here to here, I lose 20 volts, then I must lose 20 on either path. Robbie, do I know two things? Then again, I know three things. Uh, how many amps going through this branch? And you know what? It's got to be four. I didn't actually go 20 divided by five. I said they got to add to five. Although I could have also gone 20 divided by five and confirmed. This is why I said those ratio tricks really are redundant. They're nice shortcuts. But the only one I ever use is, oh, if it splits up identical resistors, then the current will divide in half. But I really didn't need to come up with that 2.5. I could have used the same trick. I could have said, oh, I got 5 amps through here, which means 30 volts through here, which means each of these is going to be 30 volts. And I could have, oh, first of all, each of these is going to be 30 volts. And if you don't believe me, try going 12 times 2.5. You'll get 30 if you go I times R. We have a bunch of different ways to arrive at the same spot with Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law and once in a while Joule's law, Joule's law if they give you a wattage instead of something else. We're good. That's going to be our strategy. We'll try and find total current and if anywhere I know two things, I know three things. And if that's good enough, if I can solve the rest by skiing, great. Sometimes you'll need to rewrite the circuit as its mathematical equivalent. But then after that, it'll fall apart. Uh, example 8 illustrates an important point. It shows us that the voltage drop across parallel resistors is the same as the drop across the equivalent mathematical. In other words, the voltage drop in my mathematical equivalent had to be 30. Each of these has to be 30. Had to be 20. Each of these has to be 20. Had to be 30. Each of these got to be 30. In a household circuit, let's go back to our houses. Plugs and lights are wired in 120 volts AC. Each circuit has a circuit breaker 
in the circuit. The circuit breaker is an automatic switch that opens, that triggers, that toggles when the current exceeds a set value, 15 amps usually. When that switch toggles, no more current can flow because the circuit has been broken. So if we connect a 1200 watt hair dryer and a 500 watt TV to the same circuit, will we cause the 15 amp breaker to trip? It's a good question. Hmm. Let's redraw this. Now, instead of a battery, we have an alternating current of 120 volts. Okay. So downhill and uphill are kind of irrelevant. Quick look, bunny. And I have a resistor here. And I have a resistor there. What do I know about the hair dryer? What do I know about the TV? Here, I'll change colors so it stands out a bit. Do I know total current? No, I, it's actually what I'm trying to find out. And if it's bigger than 15, you can't plug this in. Well, let's ski. Liam, would you like to go skiing with me? Let's go skiing. Liam, how high is the mountain? Yeah, now, downhill is either way. Let's just go this way. Whee! How many volts alternating must be going through the hair dryer? Because that got me back to the bottom of the mountain, whichever direction I go. Yes? So, 120 volts. What about this path, Liam? How many volts are going through the TV? 120 volts. Do I know two things? Okay, what's the current? Uh, power is VI, so I is gonna be power divided by voltage 10. What's the current? The right-hand one, next one, the, in the TV. Sorry? 4.16, is that right? 4.2? So, what's the total current flowing through this circuit? Are we gonna blow a breaker? We're close. You wouldn't wanna plug something else in. Something else would probably trip the breaker. And if you've ever tripped a breaker, something like this is what was going on behind the scenes in the circuit. I'm guessing most of you have tripped a breaker at least once in your life somewhere along the way. You'll notice I didn't need to rewrite this as its mathematical equivalent. I got there by skiing. I could have also probably figured out what R was and rewritten this as a single mathematical equivalent. Ah, ski. What's your homework? Lots of practice. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. We're gonna do number four right now, actually. Which groups of resistors are in series? And what I mean by that is which groups of resistors have no junctions between them? I'll give you a hint. There's only two pair. Sorry? R2 is not in series. R5 and 6 have a junction between them. Can't be. You're way overcomplicating it. What? No, R5 and R7 have a junction between them. You're R7 and R8 are in series because there's no junctions between them. And there's two more that have no junctions between them. R3, R4. What that means is if you wanted to, you could just add those together 
and replace, you could add R7 and R8 together, replace it with a single resistor. So we've done number four. Um, six is good, skip five. Eight is good, skip seven. Ten is good. We're going to do number 11 together. Which resistors are in parallel? Now, in parallel, that's where we meet up, sorry, split up, and then meet up at the bottom without gaining or losing any skiers along the way. R2 and R3. R1 and R4. Hang on, let me just... Okay, R2 and R3. R1 and R4, yes, eventually. Except they're complicated enough that you'd have to somehow take care of this before you just combine them. And in fact, really, R5 and R6 are in simple parallel. R1 and R4 are in mixed parallel because R4 has some stuff further down and R1 has some stuff further down. Um, fourteen, and finish up stuff from last day if you haven't already. Holy smokes, you guys are getting like twenty-five minutes to work on homework. Quick, like a bunny.